Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Thomas Hughes. I am a child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist here in Southern California. And today I want to talk about a post that I made about two weeks ago on TikTok that as of today has hit 2.2 million views. And I believe within the first 48 hours it hit, it hit 1 million views. So that's officially, as far as I know, a viral post. Now, of course, with that many views comes a ton of comments. And reading those comments, of course, you know, I would see people having opinions about Jackie as a person because she was the main person featured in the post. But I also saw a ton of people offering diagnoses for Jackie. I saw a lot of borderline personality disorder. I saw a lot of narcissistic personality disorder. And, you know, as somebody that makes psych diagnoses uh, or offers psych diagnoses regularly in my professional work, that stood out to me. You know, I, I don't make diagnoses for public figures or for people that are, that are on reality TV shows or people that are routinely featured in TMZ posts. And there's a reason for that. There's a lot of context. There's a lot of confounding factors to be considered when making a diagnosis. So today I wanna to talk to you about what some of those confounding factors are, and then maybe get into a little bit about what goes into actually offering a diagnosis, assuming the confounding factors have been eliminated. So when you make a diagnosis for someone, that is serious business, and it's important to have as much information as possible before coming to your final conclusion. It's important to know that it is estimated that 50% of, of the American population will have a DSM diagnosis at some point in their lives. It's not uncommon for someone to meet criteria for a DSM diagnosis. However, if someone does meet criteria for a DSM diagnosis, you wanna put that in proper context before a final diagnosis is made. I'm gonna give you an example, okay? Before I diagnose someone with schizophrenia, one of the questions that I'm going to have is whether or not there is ongoing drug use with drugs such as methamphetamine which when people use methamphetamine, they oftentimes show symptoms of schizophrenia. In that situation, I might say to myself, oh, this person doesn't actually have schizophrenia. They might have a drug use issue, which changes uh, my treatment plan. It changes the diagnosis. It changes how I approach that situation. I'll give you another example. Before I diagnose someone with depression, I'm going to ask if there's been any major life events that have occurred around the time that that person has um, had a decreased mood, such as the loss of a family member, the loss of a job. You know, that might change the diagnosis from depression to something called adjustment disorder or depression from, uh, to grief. You know, significantly different things that are based upon all of the factors contextually involved in that person's life. And I want to quickly go through some of the reasons why I do not make official diagnoses about public figures, reality TV show stars especially, okay? One of the biggest reasons why I don't do it is because of those damn cameras, all right? So, you know, if, if you've noticed that you behave differently when you're in certain settings, like you're, you're not gonna act the same way in church that you do with your friends. You're not gonna act the same way at school that you do at work. Your environment matters and it, it impacts your behaviors because there's a different set of expectations, there's a different set of rules, and usually people react accordingly. Even in 2023, when people are, are more used to being on camera than ever before, having a camera on you that you know is going to broadcast your behaviors to the world changes or impacts or influences your behavior. For most people, I think they're going to be on their best behavior when in front of a camera, but then there's other people that are gonna act at their worst when they're on camera. But either way, whether or not they're, they're playing it up for the camera, whether or not they're acting, that is something that I consider when looking at someone's behavior and I'm factoring in, factoring that in when deciding whether or not they have such and such diagnosis. The next thing you really have to think about is the external influences. Uh, I think on most of the reality shows, people don't have access to the outside world really and people aren't, don't even know that they're on the show, but there's still producers there. And I think for most of the reality shows, that, at least that I'm aware of, most people know that the producers have a way to make things go one way or to make things go another. I mean, that's probably different for every show and it's dependent upon the producer, 
But you have to keep in mind when you have a, a little red devil versus on one shoulder and an angel on the other, that is something that actually influences behavior. And it's also a factor or something that I, I factor into whether or not this is a genuine presentation of how this person acts. The next biggest reason why I do not make official diagnoses about reality show stars is editing. I mean, just imagine that a camera crew with microphones and everything followed you around for two weeks, you know, four weeks, six weeks, 24 seven documenting everything that you did. What do you think they would see? Most likely they would see the normal day to day stuff out of a person's life, you know, going to the grocery store, paying bills, um, you know, calling your, your family members and telling them how much you love them again, just, just normal stuff. But just imagine in that six week time span that they also caught you getting into an intense argument with your romantic partner. You know, what about if you and your neighbor are having issues with one another and they catch you getting into an argument with them out of all those topics that I just listed, all of those examples, what do you think is the most interesting to the rest of America? Now, if you picked the arguments and the fights, I would agree with you. Now, what do you think that the editors are going to be more likely to keep in the final cut? The drama, the tears, the mistakes you might've made during that six week time span. Now imagine someone took all that stuff and only showed those snippets or at least highlighted those snippets. Do you think that's an accurate depiction of who you are as a person? Probably not. And that's another reason why it's tough for me to take the evidence presented to me by editors as something that I would use to make a final diagnosis on someone. The main reason why I do not make official diagnoses for public figures is the stats are off. It just doesn't make sense to me. You know, it's estimated that only 1% of the population has borderline personality disorder. It's also estimated that only 5% of the population has narcissistic personality disorder. But if you look online, the way people talk about, you know, ex-partners or ex-colleagues, you would think that somewhere around 60 to 75% of the population had one of these diagnoses. Even if I were to make adjustments for statistical error, you know, and increase the 1% to 10% or the 5% to 15%, that still doesn't come close to the impression that you get that so many people have narcissistic personality disorder or borderline. I'm going to say this in the hopes that it gets into the hearts and the heads of anyone listening to this that some people are just assholes. Some people are just inconsiderate and selfish, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have a DSM diagnosis. Just because you cheat on your partner and yourself is doesn't mean you're narcissistic. And just because you have difficulty maintaining relationships and you may be an emotional person, that doesn't mean you're borderline. My whole point is there's a lot of things to consider. There's lots of context to be added. And I don't think you're going to get that from what they choose to show you from reality shows. And that's just one of the main reasons why I just don't engage in making a diagnosis publicly or officially for these people. I get that people like playing psych detective and they like to look at people's behavior and match it to the DSM criteria and they're, and they're trying to figure things out. I wouldn't dream of trying to stop people from doing that. I'm only speaking on it because I was asked about it and I hope that my perspective on things might be something that can add to the conversation. Okay. So with that being said, I got nothing else. I want to thank you for tuning in, uh, like, share, subscribe, and tune in for the next video. Take care.